Hey, and welcome back to another video. So just a few minutes ago, Apple just concluded with its October 18th event. And we're going to go over the MacBook Pro portion of the event and just go over the highlights and stuff. Now, uh, the rest of the event, uh, basically, uh, well, the first part of the event uh, included new Apple Music plans and then a bunch of new colors for the uh, HomePod. As you can see there, the HomePod Mini, uh, it comes in blue, orange and yellow now. And then there is some sound features and stuff, blah, blah, blah. The new AirPods, uh, just general stuff regarding those. The AirPod prices, if you want to know, there you go. That's also the new AirPod prices. Uh, that is the new one, the AirPods third generation there, uh, right under the Pro. But what we are here to see is the MacBook Pro and the new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. Now, but before we jump right in, don't forget to smash that like button as always and hit that subscribe button down below and also ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, smashing that like button helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm so more people can see this video and the reach of this video is extended. So please consider leaving a like on this video. If you honestly like the video or if you dislike the video, leave a dislike. Uh, I'm just looking for an honest uh, feedback here and honest opinions down in the comment section below as well. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this video. So to start things off, they started talking about the M1 and how it has changed stuff over the years, how it revolutionized, revolutionized uh, mobile uh, notebook, notebook processing and stuff like that. And they went ahead and in, uh, announced the all new uh, M1 Pro. Now the M1 Pro is an upgrade to the M1 and it's the mid tier processor because they also announced the M1 Max. Now here are some quick specs about them. Uh, 10 core CPU on both, 16 core GPU on the M1 Pro, 32 core GPU on the M1 Max, and then there's some bus speeds, memory bandwidth, and stuff like that. They got into a lot of technical detail with the stuff. I'm not going to bore you with all that. Um, Here's the uh, spec sheet for the M1 right out of the bat. So 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 200 gigabits uh, memory bandwidth, five, five nanometer process. They're all built on a five nanometer process uh, and uh, 30, uh, three point, no, 33.7 billion transistors, neural engine, all that stuff, the good stuff. Then they went on to these performance charts about how um, the power per watt performs. So we have the M1 versus the M1 Pro, the M1 Max compared to grayed out competitor PCs. They're not mentioning what the PCs are, but I'm pretty sure those are, they've got those numbers from high-end MSI, uh, MSI laptops and stuff like that. Um, MSI and then Asus Republic of Gamers. They're technically, that's what they're probably comparing them to and showing that how the M1 Pro and the M1 Max use way less power per watt and how their GPU performance uh, on battery is compared to others when you basically run them on battery because uh, when you're running on battery the performance decreases and then here's the uh, final spec sheet for the m1 max as well so we are also looking at a 5 nanometer process here 400 gigabytes uh, per second memory bandwidth and uh, then we have the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, unified memory up to 64 gigabytes, uh, 57 billion transistors over there and a neural engine, uh, ProRes and all the other good stuff as well. And then they kept on moving on to talking about all the uh, new features and how uh, iOS and iPadOS apps can now run on Mac as well. So uh, that is something, there is a selection of apps that can run and how their new processors uh, add up to all the new processing power in Final Cut Pro, uh, Photoshop and all the other things, augmented reality, and then uh, things basically uh, photo editors, video editors would love, uh, including me because I do uh, video, I do a lot of video editing on my old 2014 MacBook Pro and this is going to be a definite upgrade for me. My MacBook Pro is really really old now so I'll be getting one of these uh, eventually probably next week and we'll talk about the release at the end of this video as well the the release dates and stuff uh, but um, then they moved on to a bunch of other stuff 3d rendering games and all that stuff I was watching the event live so I got all the screenshots that I can um, and just basically a lot of stuff that you couldn't do, you can do with the new M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Well, the Pro is just the mid-range where you want to step up from the M1. And the M1 Max is just all out. If you're, I honestly, a day-to-day -day consumer would not need the M1 Max. 
But the M1 Pro, I'm pretty sure there are day-to-day -day consumers that would really need this. And I'm pretty sure I might go for the Pro or I might go for a lower spec M1 Max, but I'm not really sure. Also some Star Trek images to show how the rendering and stuff works. Uh, they just went over all the specs and stuff on the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Um, then they moved on to the laptops themselves and the new designs. Uh, MagSafe is back. That is the new MagSafe connector. It's a bit wider than the MagSafe 2 and um, it um, it can it now supports fast charging as well. The brick that ships with the MacBook is a 140 watt on the uh, the 16 inch model. So uh, you can also plug it into whatever uh, USB-C brick you want because the uh, we have MagSafe on one side and we have USB-C on the other side. So you can plug it into a 60 watt brick if you want to use your old charger. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna charge mine at 140 watts. I'm gonna charge it at 60 watts so the battery lasts longer. Uh, there's a bunch of new ports as well. Let me uh, scroll down here. So we have a full size HDMI port, USB-C on one side and a SD uh, card reader, which is great for people who use cameras, uh, DSLR cameras. They can take their memory card out and put it back there. So you don't need those stupid extensions like before. Uh, then we have the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the other side. It supports all sorts of new audio technology, uh, lossless audio, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and then we have uh, two more uh, USB-C ports on that side and we have our MagSafe port as well. And it's gonna be called MagSafe 3. So that's great, it supports fast charging. And um, I honestly hate charging off USB-C. So you, I just can't wait to get back to using, well, I never actually left MagSafe because I'm still using a 2014 MacBook Pro with uh, MagSafe 2. So MagSafe 3 is a big plus point for me. Uh, you can also charge this thing on USB-C if you want it to. So that's still there if that's your thing and it's gonna support fast charging as well. And then uh, they showed you how you can uh, use up to m a multiple bunch of displays on the uh, 16 inch model on the M1 uh, Max. And th the more pro powerful your laptop becomes, the more displays you can hook up it, hook up to it basically. Um, so that's the thing if you want that. Um, then they moved on to the new camera. The bezels and stuff have been reduced. Uh, as you can see here, the new 1080p camera. And now the thing has a notch like an iPhone. I honestly don't mind the notch as you see there, but you may not like it, but I don't mind it. Uh, there is no face ID in this thing, by the way. Uh, the face ID sensor is just too complex to put in such a small bezel as of now, but in the future we might get it, who knows. Um, but as you can see, that is the new bezel, bezel design with the 1080p uh, camera with a new aperture and stuff as well. And um, it now has a notch. Now that may be a deal breaker for some people, but it's not for me. Uh, the new display sizes are 16.2 inches on the 16 inch model, they just called it 16 inch. And we have 14.2 inches on the 14 inch model, they just call it 14 inch. Um, the pixels and stuff they mentioned earlier, also you can go and look those on your websites. Like I said, I'm not gonna uh, drag this for too long and get into too much detail. This is just an overview. We have ProMotion 120 Hertz as well on uh, both models, the 14 inch and the 16 inch as well. Uh, it's Liquid Retina HDR with mini LED displays. So finally, mini LED displays on a MacBook. So that's great. Um, they la they'll last longer than OLEDs and they'll also outperform uh, LCD. So that's a big thumbs up from me. Um, <clears throat> why do I say they'll outperform OLEDs? OLEDs get image burn after a long time and MacBooks will be always on working, 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 editing videos and stuff. And I can imagine over some time, the OLED might have a burn in of Final Cut or whatever the program you're using a lot. Now, Apple has done an excellent job on even older Apple watches and stuff. Uh, and even the iPhone X, which was the first uh, Apple device with an OLED display. Uh, a lot of iPhone Xs do not have image burn when compared to a lot of Samsung devices. However, um, we, we can't really tell how that'll work out on a MacBook because the MacBooks are gonna be used much more for productivity and stuff. Uh, so these mini LED technology is honestly better overall uh, than OLED. It does not have as better as colors, as deep blacks and stuff as an OLED. However, it's a trade-off. It's better than LCD and it's more durable than an OLED. Um, but maybe in the future we might have OLEDs as well, but I'm really happy this mini LED technology is now on a um, 
is now on MacBooks. Um, then we moved on to a bunch of other stuff. The can he starts talking about the camera again and the speakers. There's a new speaker system um, with new woofers and stuff like that. I'm not an expert on speakers, so I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, we have studio quality mics as well now, so that's great for recording. I might end up using them. I know the speaker system is a six uh, speaker system with their uh, spatial audio technology, so that's nice. Next, they move on to uh, CPU performance and stuff again. So the M1 Max versus the M1 Pro versus the earlier generation Core i9 MacBooks. There is your CPU performance charts. Again, CPU performance two times faster on the M1 Max and the M1 Pro compared to the Core i9. Um, graphics performance also there's a huge increase when compared to the Radeon Pro 5600M on the M1 Max it's a four times faster on the M1 Pro it's two times uh, 2.5 times faster now these are integrated cheap uh, GPUs and CPUs they're built on one chip the chip does the GPU and the CPU together uh, ML performance is over there and they gave us a bunch of other performance numbers as well compared to Core i7s which was the most used processor in the previous models 3.7 times faster and so on then we go on to the memory uh, 60 up to 64 gigs of unified memory on the 16 inch model and stuff like that and then they go on to internet speeds and ssd speeds so up to uh, 7.4 gigabits per second uh, on the uh, ssd and then they go on to the battery life on stuff so uh, they used video playback as benchmark so for the 16 inch model you get a 17 hour video playback and on the 20 on the 14 inch model you get 21 hours of video playback um those are the benchmarks they use and then music and other stuff will vary depending on that uh, but video playback was used as the benchmark then they talk about fast charge on all macbooks so 50 percent in 30 minutes so depends on what charger they ship with uh as you can see here the uh thing the the lower end models ship with uh, either a 67 watt brick or a 97 watt brick and the uh, higher end models uh, will ship with the uh, 140, 140 and 140 watt brick as well. I think I said 160 watts earlier, I was wrong, it was 140. Um, so depending on the battery size, the brick that ships in the box will do. But I, like I said earlier, you can plug this in with a, um, a different uh, USB-C brick as well if you want to charge at a different speed. Then they go on to talk about the final specs and all the other stuff like that and uh, now we can move on to release date so you can go and purchase it today itself you can go on their website and purchase it today it will be available to ship on the 26th of october as you can see there so 26th of october and these are the prices so the base model for the 14 inch starts at 199 and the upgraded model starts at uh, 2499 and obviously you can add more specs and the prices are going up then moving on to the 16 inch models you can start with uh, 2500 $2,499 for the base model, $2,699 for the mid-tier model, and $3,499 for the uh, maxed out model. And you can even max, you can max these out even more depending on how much you want. I'm probably going for the base 16 inch with a 512 uh, gig SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, well, uh, sorry, 32 gigs of RAM and uh, the M1 Max, because I want the M1 Max and storage is not a problem for me. So that's probably what I'll do. 512 uh, gig SSD, 32 gigs of RAM, M1 Max, base model uh, uh, 16 inch with the M1 Max. Anyway, that was just a quick rundown of today's event with respect to the MacBook Pros and what was launched, the new design and stuff like that. It's a quick rundown uh, that I could shove within like 12 minutes, um, but you can go on Apple's website as usual and look up what's up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you honestly did, don't forget to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification as well. And check out my social media down in the description below. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.